Back in February, Andrew Barry, the GM of the Browns, said that it isn't a necessity to restructure Deshaun Watson's contract this year. He's got that $46 million salary every single year fully guaranteed. Well, they restructured it. They took the $46 million down to the league minimum. The rest of it was converted to a bonus spread out over multiple years. And result, they created $36.8 million in cap space this year. But the other side of that, his cap number for next year with that $46 million salary is $72.935 million. His cap number for the year after that, the final year of the contract, $72.935 million. And he's got a $38 million parting gift dead cap charge in 2027. So I don't know what they're thinking, and I don't know whether they just want to have flexibility in case an opportunity arises during the season. If all else fails... You can just carry that money to next year and use it to address the $72 million cap charge Deshaun Watson's going to have. But, you know, they picked up $36.8 million for a reason, and it was easy to do it. Most of these contracts have the right in there for the team to just basically wave a wand and restructure all the way down to the minimum salary and kick dollars into future years. But it just was weird to get so caught up in, oh, look at all this cap space they created. The other side of it is, Look at all this cap space they're pushing into these years where there's already a pretty big cap number. Yeah, they're projected to be over the cap. Now, we don't know what the cap's going to be next year, but they're projected to be over by $44 million. So I'm guessing that's why they did it, Mike, to carry that into next year. But I'm worried for them because of Deshaun Watson's shoulder. Are we positive that that shoulder is is good. Are we positive that he can stay on the field? He hasn't shown that. And if, if that shoulder is messed up and he has another year, like he's had the previous two years with the Browns, they're tied to him. Hey, you get another quarterback in there. I get that. You don't have to play him necessarily, but doesn't this mean that they're tied to him now for the next two years? For certain, the dead cap hits are just too much. He's got to be on the roster. They're not going to trade him. Nobody would want that contract. Right. They'd have to do the Brock Osweiler thing where they basically give a draft pick, a big draft pick to get somebody to take the guaranteed money or trade him and pay a bunch of the guaranteed money. They're eventually going to have to decide whether to keep him through the end of the contract or do the Broncos, Russell Wilson, rip off the Band-Aid and pay him $46 million minus whatever the league minimum is that he gets with another team if he gets anything. But this is going to go down as one of the worst trades of all time because the contract was so bad and they gave up three first-round picks and three other picks that could have become the nucleus of a team that is already great. They swung for the fences, and they hit themselves in the head with the bat, and they still have a great team. That's what makes this so unique. This is the first time that we can say that team made an all-time historic bad decision, but, man, they're still pretty good. How much better would they be if they hadn't stepped on that rake? Well, and they rebuilt the Texans. We just talked about Texans got a shot this year. They just rebuilt the Texans, and the Texans – I would say probably are a better team than the Browns this year. And they did it overnight with what the Browns gave them through the draft. So yes, they're still a really good team. They thought they were missing that quarterback and they went and they overspent because that's the only way they were going to get Deshaun Watson was that fully guaranteed contract that they gave him. And now they're stuck with him for lack of a, a better term, but that's what it is. They're stuck with him regardless of how he plays this year, regardless of if he stays on the field, Mike. On the surface, the fact that the Browns are still very competitive takes some of the pressure off of them for him to deliver, but it still underscores the fact that if they didn't have that that anchor weighing them down, they'd be even better. A ton of pressure on Watson, though, to finally deliver. You know, in hindsight, you don't want that fully guaranteed five-year contract. You don't want everything that goes along with it, especially when you're coming off of all the off-field ugliness, sitting out a full year because you refused to play for the Texans and they basically paid you to not play. Talk about a hold-in. That was a full year hold-in. He didn't want to be there. They were going to trade him. They paid him his full salary that year. They didn't trade him. And then the next year the trade happens. He gets suspended. He's played 12 games since 2020 when he had 4,800 passing yards and would have been an MVP candidate. He's got to get back to that form and nobody knows if he can, probably including him. Okay. You have a chance to win $1 million in the NBC sweepstakes on Yahoo Fantasy. 
button. Just download the redesigned Yahoo Fantasy app or go to NBCSports.com slash Fantasy Million for additional details. What are you waiting for? Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.